Triple Threat Productions. Photography, videography, promotion. Hi, so I'm Maya and I'm with Triple Threat Productions. We're here with DJ Searle at the Amazura Concert Hall in Queens, New York. And so let's start out with, you know, what, what kind of EDM do you specialize in? Because, you know, that's why I we're all here. I play Happy Hardcore slash UK Hardcore. How long have you been spinning? I have been actually DJing since 2006, but I've been producing since around 99. I heard the music, like I heard Better Off Alone, and I really liked the song, so I wanted to reproduce stuff that was like that, except faster. So that's basically what I did. Got me into 2000, learned how to make music faster, and took it from there, yeah. And then I got a more advanced program on a PC, and uh, yeah, then I got a track signed, and here I am. Is your family involved? Is no, in I was pretty much the first one in my family to get into music. It was more through my cousins and stuff that I used to hang out with, people at school and stuff. How's the scene changed since you first started? Well, everyone say it says that it changes, but really it's the people that change and they think it changes. Because like everyone gets into the scene and goes, wow, this is so new and amazing. And then a couple of years later, like, oh my God, it's not as good as it used to be. But at the same time, new people are just getting in and saying the exact same thing and it's like a big cycle, yeah. What would you have done differently in the past 11 years for the scene since you've been involved? Um, nothing really. Nothing? No regrets? No, I've got no regrets. Uh, if I had actually been more business savvy, I guess I could be a lot richer by now, but... Um, so since 2001, you've gone from raver to DJ, and you know, what would you say some of the major differences are that and like what do you enjoy about each side either way like now that i've grown up i sort of don't rave as much but i still like to be a part of the scene as a dj i guess and seeing people like my music like seeing i know what i was like back then and knowing that i'm doing the same thing for people now as a dj yeah it's cool full circle i keep setting myself new goals to try and beat like uh at first i wanted to play at a rave and i did that and then uh, I wanted to hear my own music being played at a rave, not by me, and that happened, and I wanted to play overseas and blah blah blah, so yeah. Well, I hear that you get a lot of candy from your fans, what do you do with all of it? Uh, I've got uh, three big drawers of it at home, and I've got it all hanging up and stuff. I've still got every piece that everyone's ever given me, so I don't throw it out. In 2005, you met Kevin Energy, yeah. which was part of the Free Formation Tour. Yep. How exactly did that happen? How, how did you meet him? Well, because he's really cool, he was actually helping out running the show, so he was on the door saying hello to every person that walked through. So that's how I met him. But it was actually a friend of mine who was hanging out with him, who gave him my CD. So I didn't actually do anything. Uh, someone else liked my music, gave him the CD, he liked the music, got in touch with me, and signed me. So I pretty much did nothing. <laughs> what about your work did stood well, out to him? When I first started, I was, wasn't technically very good at all, but I think it was just the writing. Like uh, the first track that caught his ears were was Transformers. Then I think he realised that was something that ravers were into at that time. Like this was ages ago. Same with like my Peak Girl track. It's like something that everyone can relate to, and people were like. And I think he picked up on that, and obviously did. Same with Pretty Rave Girl. He was the one that signed that. Like someone else actually turned that track down, and he's the one that picked it up. And sure enough. Got big. So what was the process like when you first started to like produce your first album? Uh, well I haven't actually done an album but you mean that first mix? Well, yeah. The first mix I did, well that was basically just all the songs I'd done and I put into one mix and then I did a mega mix because like 10 years ago everyone used to do mega mixes for their mixes but now no one does it so I yeah. thought I'd bring it back. How do you prepare yourself for like production before you make a song or even a rave and just writing for everything? Uh, well, usually when I go on tour, I get really bored because the plane rides are really long. And that's usually when I'm thinking and coming up with random ideas. And then also, like when I was a kid, I used to like watching cartoons and I knew what I liked. And so I, I sort of look at what the kids like now and that's where Pika Girl came from. And yeah, just trying to stay up with the trends and all that crap. Yeah. <laughs> How's promotion and production changed since 4 EDM since 2005? Because, you know, since Facebook and everything got over. Yeah, yeah that's just sort of a big thing. I guess it's a good thing and a bad thing because uh, it's more open for everyone to get into. So, like, there's a lot of non ravers going to raves now. So, it's sort of commercialized a bit more. But at the same time, that's good for the scene, I guess, because it keeps it growing and all that. Yeah. But how has it, like, 
change the, change the promotion the and no just not not the rave itself like getting it started and off the ground promotion and production wise uh well i don't actually promote so i wouldn't even know oh. but uh yeah <laughs> i just dj that's all i do i just spin the disc <laughs> you've worked with a lot of people yeah. uh, who do you think you worked closest with closest with uh well i guess kevin energy i went over to his place when i did a uk tour and we did a lot of production together I generally don't like doing collaborations because I prefer to just do my own thing. But um, like I'm touring with Kurt right now, DJ Kados, and uh, yeah, so we—he's pretty much the only one I've toured with. So yeah, I'd say DJ Kados, Australia, Brisbane. What would be your like dream tag team with another DJ? Dream tag set. Um, well, I've pretty much done a lot of. I guess Scott Brown. Because he was my like, uh, he was my favorite DJ as a DJ, but he doesn't really DJ anymore. So I know it's like DJ Gamma or someone like that. But in saying that, our styles just completely contrast. So, <laughs> but yeah, I'd say Scott Brown. What pinch of personal personal touch do you add to your performance to keep the magic going for the whole crowd? Um, I just try to stay energetic and lively, just keep the crowd involved, I guess. Trying to just stand there and do that. Yeah. I've got nothing against laptop DJs. I just went to a gig once and there was three dudes as one team, like three people as a you know a set, and they were all taking turns of pressing sync. Like three guys to do that. It's like unnecessary. So that's why I made the song. But really, I think laptop DJ is the next you know step for DJing, like the next evolution. So I've got nothing against it. I'll, I'll probably go in a laptop one day, but yeah, once CDJ stays out. But How long do you think that's going to take? Probably, I don't know, at least five years, I guess. Yeah. You've been around the world in places like your hometown in Australia, which is... Where are you from? Again, we Brisbane. never asked you before. Brisbane. Okay. Queensland. Bris Brisbane, Queensland. <laughs> um, your hometown in Brisbane, Australia, and to New Zealand, and U yeah. the USA, and all over Europe, and uh, the UK as well. So by far, what has to be your favorite place? Uh, I really like playing in Sydney because they always have big crowds and fun crowds. Uh, Arizona is really good, Seattle's really good, Tennessee is really good. UK had a really big one that I went to, but I haven't been to UK too much. I'd say they're my favourites. Oh, and of course playing in Brisbane's always the best. <laughs> one of your most favourite songs is Pretty Rave Girl. Yeah. And uh, you know, tell us how you came up with the track and what some of, uh, some of your favourite tracks and singles that you've come out with. Of my own stuff. What? Of my own stuff. Yes. Um, Pretty Rave Girl, uh, that was sort of just a good idea that I had. Yeah, it was, yeah that, you know that Daddy DJ song, the mm. tune that it's from? Yeah, I, I like that, but I want to make it faster and also make it more ravey. Okay. Yeah, so just put my own spin on it. And it was basically just a test to see if I could sing or not. And I nearly deleted the song because I didn't like it, but I uploaded it anyway and then it exploded. But out of my own stuff, uh, I like that Kamehameha one that I made, that was pretty cool. That's the Dragon Ball Z one. Um, I've got a couple of new ones too that uh, aren't really shoulder boulders. That's a new one. It's like dealer except about boobs. <laughs> yeah, it's coming soon. <laughs> and what can we expect from you in the near future? Uh, well, there's that song. I've got a remix of Little Candy Raver with like new lyrics and stuff. That's I've been playing that on this tour. It's been going really well. I'll play it tonight. The biggest one will be Candy Raver though. Yeah. When when can we expect that? That will be about a month or so. Probably about a month and a half. Yeah. Where do you foresee the Australia rave scene in terms of Happy Hardcore going? My prediction is Happy Hardcore will come back in another form, like eventually, but I don't think it'll be next. It'll be something else, and maybe something else, and then Happy Hardcore again. So yeah, it'll always be there, but it won't be at the top for a while. <laughs> Alright, well, this has been Maya with Triple Threat Productions, and I'm here with DJ Searle. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good day. Be there.